when we're uh, making runs and we don't know who's in the car, we put this on it and then that. But then later today, we're putting this, this on the car. Oh, shit. <laughs> What's that for? That's for you. Me? I've been lying to you for six months straight, and now about I can finally what? be honest and tell you the truth. About what? About this. I'm going for a ride. I am. Yeah. It's your turn. He didn't even tell me we were going to the races or anything. Oh, we got on the plane. We got on the plane yesterday. He didn't tell me we were just going to the races. Oh, that kid of yours, he's a real jokester, isn't he? He's incredible. There's no way in the world that I could have any idea. When we were coming up here, he wouldn't tell me what we were coming for. And so for, so for a long time, uh, I thought what he had done is that he had bought a motorhome because he said something about driving back. So I thought he had bought a motorhome that we were coming here to take it back. And he didn't tell me anything till we were on the plane yesterday coming up here, only that we were coming to a race. I had no idea about this. <laughs> what does it feel to be the biggest liar on the face <laughs> of the earth? It was rough. I had to lie to my dad for uh, at least six months. I didn't want him to know what we were doing. I wanted it to be a surprise and I came up with more BS than, than you can even imagine. How many times have you lied to your dad before the, before this weekend? Uh, it's been a long time since I've had that level of lies. <laughs> well, I just, what, I want, what I want you to know is that I, I just I'm shocked, surprised, and I and I and I love you for going to all this stuff and just to your dad uh, something special, yeah. incredible. Uh, I well, appreciate it. So. Yeah, you're welcome, Dad. Love you. I'm glad I don't have to lie to you anymore because that was tough. It's been a long time. <laughs> so Well, and also from the, from the thoughts I had in my mind about what this trip was about, this, this relieves me that you're not going nuts. <laughs> Former NHRA Top Fuel champ. Now, the world's fastest Uber driver. I, uh, when Chris called me about doing this, uh, uh, I almost started bawling. Like, I, I've been friends with the family for an awful long time. Um, loved Daryl to death and just have always stayed uh, uh, close with Chris and, and Vernell and uh, the mom, Gwen. And uh, I'm just, right now, the only thing on my mind is I'm hoping that uh, uh, Gwen doesn't kill me. Larry and I talked about my mom's reaction and why she still doesn't know. Um, and Larry said that She'd kill both of us if she found out. So he's glad she's not here too. <laughs> I'm not nervous, I'm kind of excited because I talked to Daryl many times about uh, what it was like the first trips that he made down and, and uh, how it felt in the beginning. So he and I talked a lot about it. Probably great anticipation as to what's, what's going to happen. It's drag racing, right? That's what we do. That's what our family's done forever. And um, I thought it was time my dad give back, give back to my dad. You know, he's given to me and Daryl our whole lives, and we raced and always had the best and went everywhere we wanted to go. And um, I wanted to give him something that he'd never forget. Uh, 
Burnell's a big fan of the sport uh, since day one and, and still. Uh, so to be able to do this, um, it's uh, again part of the reason I wanted to do this in the very beginning before everything, all the stuff happened, was to be able to give people opportunities that wouldn't normally get that chance a chance like you're letting people kind of backstage in a club that you wouldn't normally get to get in so um i i love that and i love that i love that he's doing it and i love that i'm the one uh doing it with him for him What's your mindset? Woo. I'm a little nervous. I'm excited. So we'll see. I'm glad <laughs> the weather held up and I'm glad he's in that thing right now because uh, it, uh, it's kind of, I think, a pretty cool deal. I think he's ate up with this sport and racing all on his own <laughs> before his kids. Kids, obviously, growing up in that house. Um, they've all, you know, had their shares of racing. Um, so um, I, I think it's really cool that uh, to uh, to be able to do something that to this point in time, you know, a half dozen people in the world got to go for a ride in a top fuel car in the history of history period, and he's one of the first.
Incredible, Larry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. If I wouldn't break my phone, I'd say, let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Catch your breath. Pretty good, Rod. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> you know, it was amazing. As tight as I was in, as, as tight as I was in, I could feel it lifting. Oh, me yeah. Up. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Larry, I don't have to buy the fire suit. <laughs> so, Vernell, what does this say about a 79-year-old? Wow. That's <laughs> all I can say is wow. And, uh, hey, Chris. You're a little red. <laughs> the warm. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. You went faster than the last one. 200, 259 mile an hour to half track. <laughs> How was that? Time slip. Good job. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> Thank you for letting me be part of this, too. <laughs> All because of you. I feel like he's still this beautiful car. So he went 259.82 to the eighth, which is pretty, pretty quick. 334. He ran a 5.39 at 172 to, all the way to the end, but the shoot's out. <laughs> you all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, what do you think, Larry? I told, I told Larry I'm, uh... If I wouldn't break my son, I'd probably go again. <laughs> um, the original concept for this car was give people the opportunity they would never get an opportunity to be in a top fuel car I wasn't looking to <laughs> start a war or do anything it was to like make people like him with a big grin on their face like that um, and, and and we got to do that and so uh, that's uh, that's all I'm looking for you know just uh, added another one to the club that's been down a racetrack in a top fuel car <laughs>